Hello students, welcome to the CWTS subject. In today's video lecture, we are going to discuss Lesson 6, Calamity and Disaster Preparedness. The Philippines is one of the world's largest archipelago nations. It is situated in Southeast Asia in the Western Pacific Ocean. In fact, the Philippines contain one of the most diverse ecosystems threatened by in the world. However, this biodiversity is threatened by anthropocentric activities such as pollution, overfishing, tourism, and a multitude of other direct and indirect problems. In order for the ecosystems to coexist with humanity, essential steps to fully inculcate environmental awareness among fellow Filipinos must be strengthened and emphasized. Okay, so let's define a disaster. What do we mean by disaster? Disaster is a disturbance of a normal condition whether man-made or natural. Okay, so you have to remember my dear students that there are types of disaster. We have the man-made which means this is extreme hazardous event that are caused by human beings. So tao mismo ang may gawa. We can say that this type of disaster is maybe a result of human intent or sinadya talaga. We can also consider the negligence of human or kapabayaan or maybe an error na talagang nagkamali kaya nagkaroon ng disaster. On the other hand, we also have the natural disaster. So natural disaster is a natural event such as flood, earthquake, or hurricane that causes great damage or loss of life. Take note of the word natural, hindi sinadya ng tao, hindi gawa ng tao, okay? So how can we tell if a certain event is already considered as a disaster? Usually, it happens when communities alone cannot manage an emergency resulting from hazards using their own resources. That is why when a certain disaster exists, the community requires external assistance because the damage and destruction exceed their abilities and capacities. And dito na mag-intervene yung mga different groups groups established by our government to assist and give aid to people who are affected by such disaster. Next one, we have the disaster management. It includes the development of disaster recovery plans for minimizing the risk of disaster and for handling them when they do not occur and the implementation of such plans. It usually refers to the management of natural catastrophes such as fire, flooding or earthquakes. So basically, sa disaster management, it's a process of effectively preparing for and responding to disaster. So here, nagkakaroon sila ng different strategies in order to at least lessen the harm that disasters may cause. Ang role ng disaster management group is to plan, organize, coordinate, and implement all necessary measures to prevent, prepare, respond, and recover from disaster events. Okay? So we also have here disaster risk reduction. It's a conceptual framework of elements considered with the possibilities to minimize vulnerabilities and disaster risks through mitigation and preparedness to avoid the adverse impact of hazards within the broad context of sustainable development. So in short, disaster risk reduction or yung DRR it aims to reduce the damage caused by natural hazards through prevention. Now, the question, what then is the importance of disaster risk reduction? Okay, so the importance of disaster risk reduction, it protects the lives and livelihoods of communities and individuals who are most vulnerable to disasters. Whether the crisis is caused by nature or humans, DRR or the disaster risk reduction limits its negative impact on those who stand to lose the most. Okay, next one we have here the disaster control. What do we mean by disaster control? The act of limiting or mitigating the effects of disasters through the introduction of measures designed to prepare the inhabitant and to protect their lives and properties before, during, and after a disaster. So basically, there are measures taken before, during, or after the disaster to reduce the probability of damage, minimize its effect, and initiate recovery. 
Next one, we have this term conflagration. What do we mean by conflagration? It's a large disastrous fire involving numerous buildings, houses, or structures. We have the NDCC. So the NDCC is an interagency council responsible for disaster preparedness, prevention, and mitigation. So the NDCC utilizes the facilities and services of the Office of the Civil Defense as its operating arm in the discharge of its function. Okay, so the NDCC stands for National Disaster Coordinating Council. However, my dear students, this was already replaced. This was already changed into NDRRMC. Alam ko familiar na kayo dito sa NDRRMC. So the National Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Council which is formerly known as the National Disaster Coordinating Council, is a working group of various government, non-government, civil sector, and private sector organizations of our government. That's why kapag merong disaster, di ba minsan, meron tayong natatanggap na message from NDRRMC. So, ano ang role ngayon ng NDRRMC? This council is responsible for ensuring the protection and welfare of the people during disasters or emergency. So, kung mapapansin nyo, halos same naman sila ng responsibilities, okay? Para ma-ensure, ma-protectahan yung welfare ng mga tao na maapektuhan ng disaster, okay? Next one, we have the Philippine Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Act, okay? So, basically, Republic Act number. 10-1-2-1 Okay, so Republic Act number 10-1-2-1 or the Philippine Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Act of 2010 is a law which transforms the Philippines disaster management system from disaster relief and response towards disaster risk reduction. Okay? So, its name and acronym may be lengthy, napakahaba, but you have to take note that it plays a major role in keeping the country safe from disasters and ensuring quick recovery afterwards. Okay? So, another one, it provides for the calamity fund to be used in support of disaster risk reduction or mitigation prevention and preparedness activities for the potential occurrence of disasters and not just for the response, relief, and rehabilitation efforts. Okay, another one. The Act mandate the establishment of Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Office or DRRMO in every province, in every city, and in every municipality and a Barangay Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Committee or the BDRRMC in every barangay. Okay? Next one, we have the Disaster Risk Reduction and Management again. Okay? So, it's a range of activities preparedness, mitigation, prevention, emergency response, and recovery that contribute to increasing capacities and reducing immediate and long-term vulnerabilities to prevent or at least minimize the damaging impact in a community. Okay, so take a look in this uh, disaster management cycle. So, we have mitigation, preparedness, response, and recovery. So, unahin natin si mitigation. So, when we say mitigation, it is an act to minimize the effects of disaster. Examples, yung pagbibuild ng codes and zoning, and yung pagkakaroon ng public education or seminar to educate the people. Next one, we have the preparedness. So, sa preparedness naman, it's a plan on how we respond respond to disaster. Examples under preparedness, yung pagkakaroon ng uh, preparedness plans, emergency exercises, or training, and of course, warning systems. Next one, we have the response. So, these are efforts to minimize the hazards created by a disaster. Examples under response, yung pagkakaroon ng uh, search and rescue operation and yung pagpaprovide ng emergency relief sa mga naapektuhan ng disaster. And last one, we have recovery. So, under recovery, the people return to their community and everything is back to normal. So, examples under recovery, yung pagpaprovide ng temporary housing to those people who are affected by disaster. Another one, yung pagbibigay ng financial aid ng government and of course, providing of medical so basically, ito yung cycle ng disaster management. We have mitigation, preparedness, response, and recovery. 
Okay, the question, what is the role of the youth in disaster preparedness? Ano ba ang responsibility? Ano ang role, anong obligasyon ng mga kabataan sa disaster o pag nagkaroon ng disaster? Okay, so first one, sharing the message. Okay, the youth can help share the message of disaster preparedness. Next one, acting as change makers. So, ibig sabihin, the youth can act as change makers by sharing information they learn in youth preparedness programs and helping parents and communities to prepare for disaster. For example, by developing a disaster plan or disaster preparation kit. And last but not the least, bringing activities. So, the youth or mga kabataan, they can bring creative and resourceful ideas to disaster preparedness efforts. Okay, is it clear? Next one, we have the man-made disaster na na-define na natin kanina sa my introduction. So again, man-made disaster is caused by any untoward human activity resulting to damage to properties and loss of lives. Okay? So there are three categories of man-made disaster. What are these? So first, we have the armed conflict and civil strife. What do we mean by this, sir? Disaster management concern itself with various aspects of armed conflicts and civil strife including the protection and support of displaced persons and refugees during the conflict physical and economic reconstruction and social rehabilitation in the aftermath of the conflict okay so itong first category arises whenever there is fighting between states or countries between government authorities and organized armed groups. A good example of this one would be the North Korean and South Korean War of 1950. Okay? Next category we have here is the technological disasters. Okay? It's a result of accidents or incidents occurring in the manufacture, transport, or distribution of hazardous substances such as fuel, chemicals, explosive, or nuclear materials. So basically, when we say technological disaster, my dear students, it is an event caused by a malfunction of a technological structure or some human error in controlling or handling the technology. And usually, yung mga victims ng technological disasters, they tend to feel anger toward people who were responsible for accidents na pwede pa sanang maiwasan or ma-prevent. Examples of technological hazards include industrial pollution, dam failures, transport accidents, factory explosions, yung pagkakaroon pa ng fire or chemical spills. Okay? So those are the examples of technological disasters. And last but not the least, we have here the disaster in human settlements. So urban fire is the kind of principal disaster. There can be devastating effect when fires break out in low-level communities or in the press areas. Of course, we have to admit fire can be deadly. Okay, It can destroy homes and wildlife habitat and it can pollute our air with emissions which is harmful to human health. What then is fire? Ano ba ibig sabihin ng fire? Okay, napaka-basic sa inyo nito. Fire is a product of combustible materials. In order to produce fire, there must be fuel, oxygen, and heat. So here are the basic preventions we can do to save ourselves from fire according to the Bureau of Fire Protection or BFP. Okay? So the Bureau of Fire Protection suggests this basic preventions. Number one, close the door of the room when there is fire and close all doors as you leave to delay the spread of fire and smoke. Okay, next one, make sure to use the back of your hand in touching hot objects. And another one, cover your nose and mouth with wet towel, drop to the floor, and crawl away from the fire. And last but not the least, leave the affected area as quickly as possible without saving valuables or possessions, and plan your escape route before the fire spreads. Most of all, do not panic. Okay, so here are the basic preventions that we can do according to the BFP. 
Okay? Moving on to the next, we have general classifications of fuel. Ano-ano yung mga classifications ng fuel? We have class A, class B, class C, and class D. So, when we say class A, these are the ordinary combustible materials which are mostly solid. How about sa class B naman? So, these are kinds of fuel which are in liquid or gas state. For example, yung LPG or yung gasoline, di ba? Yung oil and other petroleum products. How about sa class C? These are electrically energized. Ito na papasok yung mga appliances natin such as flat iron, um, electric fan, and many appliances pa. Okay? And sa class D naman, these are metallic fire. Okay? So, next one, we have the stages of fire. So, imagine, meron pa palang stages of fire. Okay? We have the incipient stage, a smoldering stage, flame stage, and heat stage. Okay? So, simulan natin sa incipient stage. So, under this stage, there is no visible smoke or flame. Wala pa daw usok. Wala pang apoy. Okay? Next one, we have the smoldering stage. So, under this stage, there is smoke but no flame. Meron ng usok pero wala pang apoy. Okay? And on the third stage, we have the flame stage. Under this stage, there is an actual fire and heat builds up in the air. So, meron ng fire. Okay? And the last stage, we have the heat stage. So, in this stage, there is uncontrolled spread of superheated air. Take note, uncontrolled. Okay? Hindi na nakokontrol yung pagkalat ng... Uh, Apoy, okay? Okay, so next one, we have the classes of fire and how they are extinguished. Okay, so, meron ulit tayo dito ang class A, class B, class C, and class D. Okay, sa class A, ano yung mga materials na nandito? Wood, cloth, paper, trash, plastic, and upholstery. So, anong gagawin natin kapag nag-exist or nagkaroon ng class A fire? So, use water to extinguish class A fires. So, the ASIC or foam extinguishers. Okay? And then, sa class B naman, fire occurs out of flammable liquids and gases such as gasoline, oil grease, paints, kerosene, solvents, and so much more. Okay? So, paano natin papatayin yung class B fire? Use dry powder foam, vaporizing liquid, or carbon dioxide extinguishers for class B fires. Don't use water on class B it will speedily spread the fire. Take note ha, huwag gagamit ng water pag class B fire yung nag-exist. Okay? Kasi bibilis yung pag-spread or pagkalat ng apoy. And then we have the class C. This kind of fire originates from energized electrical equipment, fuse boxes, wirings, and appliances. Anong gagawin natin kapag nag-exist si class C? Using water should be avoided as it may cause shock or fatal electrocution. Okay? So, extinguishers with a C rating are designed for use with fires involving energized electrical equipment. So, meron tayong type C. Okay? Meron tayong class C na extinguishers na para lang din sa class C fire. Okay? And for the last one, we have the class D. Okay? Combustible metals are the sources of class D fires such as magnesium, potassium, and sodium and other materials. Anong gagawin natin kapag nag-exist or nagkaroon ng class D fire? The best and only recommended way to extinguish a class D fire is to use a dry powder fire extinguisher. Okay? So, kabisaduhin nyo ito ha kung ano yung mga gagawin nyo kapag nagkaroon ng fire sa inyo. Okay? Para alam nyo kung anong type, anong class of fire extinguisher ang gagamitin. Next one, we have here the natural disaster. So, na-define na natin ito kanina. Again, it occurs when there is no human intervention to cause such and are often referred to as acts of God. These are some practical preventions. Okay? So, very common na sa inyo yung mga natural disasters kasi na-experience din natin yung iba rito. Okay? So, the location of our country, which the Philippines, of course, also makes it vulnerable to other natural disasters, including frequent earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, as well as tsunamis, sea level rise, storm surges, landslide, flooding, and many more. And majority naman ng mga natural disasters na ipapakita ko sa inyo sa mga susunod na slides ay familiar na rin sa inyo since na-experience na talaga natin ito in a real life. Okay? So, the first natural disaster we have here is flood. 
what to do when there is flood. When fast rising of water in an area has been observed, go to the higher ground. Flood is the condition that occurs when water overflows the natural or artificial confines of a stream or body of water or when runoff waters from heavy rainfall accumulates over low-lying areas. Okay? How about typhoon? Okay, anong gagawin natin? What to do when there is typhoon? Always monitor the weather bulletin to the local weather bureau and local government units. Okay? Next one, we have tsunami. When there is a fast decrease in the seawater level, usually the tsunami occurs and even after an earthquake. So, ang gagawin kapag may tsunami, get to higher ground as far inland as possible. Watching a tsunami from the beach or cliffs could put you in a grave danger. So, next one, we have storm surge. It pertains to the abnormal rise of water level along a shore as a result primarily of the winds and pressures associated with storms. So, during storm surge, you have to stay inside where you are protected from the water. It's best to be on the downwind side of the window away from windows. Next one, we have earthquake. So, anong gagawin when there is earthquake? So, before that, earthquake is a sudden sleeping or movement of a portion of the earth's crust accompanied and followed by series of vibrations. So, if this occurs, Cover your head with hard objects like books, chairs, and others and leave the building immediately. What to do when there is volcanic eruption? Okay, you have to keep updated with the reports and to the advice of the volcanologists if you are living near a volcano. You should prepare first aid kit, flashlight, and radio with batteries, matches, candles, ready to eat food, and extra clothes wrapped in plastic bags before the occurrence of that natural calamity. So next one, we have the tropical cyclone. What do we mean by tropical cyclone? It is an intense weather disturbance such as typhoon and storm composed of a big whirling mass of wind and rains similar to whirlwind, tornado, or water sprout but having immense or wide dimensions. So what to do when there is tropical cyclone? Stay indoors during the hurricane and away from windows and glass doors. Close all interior doors, secure and brace external door another one we have radioactive fallout so these are dust particles of earth and debris together with radioactive materials that cling to them carried by wind for many kilometers and falling it back to earth here's the thing you need to do get inside the nearest building or house to avoid radiation and remove contaminated clothing and wipe off or wash unprotected skin if you were outside after the fallout arrived okay and for the last one we have landslides okay so what is landslide it brought by movement of masses of rocks dirt or debris down a slope what you need to do when landslide occurs find cover in the section of the building that is farthest away from the approaching landslide take shelter under a strong table or bench and hold on firmly and stay put until all movement has ceased okay so that explains chapter 4 Lesson 6, Calamity and Disaster Preparedness. I hope you have learned new something today. Thank you so much for joining our today's session. Again, this is Sir Marvin telling you that you should never stop learning because life never stops teaching. Have a great day ahead.